Hello, welcome to DEI Matters, Conversations with Margaret Credo Thomas. This is a new avenue as a community to have thoughtful and meaningful conversations about diversity, equity, inclusion, and anti-racism. And today our guest is Jillian Harvey, and she is the director of the town for DEI. Welcome, Jill. Hi, Margaret. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Good. Thank you so much for joining me today it's for us to just have a conversation. And you and I have had merits of conversations mm -hmm. um, in regards to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and so why don't we start with you just telling us a little bit about yourself um, and we can start from there. Okay. <laughs> um, so I guess I'll start with how I got to Arlington. Um, I realized, well, in looking for DEI positions back mm -hmm. in 2019, that at the root of kind of my base of passions was actually social justice and racial justice and advocacy work. Um, because I, I really wanted to be an archaeologist. Oh, really? I didn't <laughs> did, know that about yeah. you. <laughs> I did. I was on the archaeology track, <laughs> and then my field school got canceled. So I was like, oh, "That's a sign okay. not to do that." Okay. Um, so from there, I was super involved during my undergrad years, and I studied anthropology. So I've always had a fascination with people and culture, um, and really just helping people kind of navigate life. Mm -hmm. And from there. Um, I worked at the Children's Hospital for five years oh, okay. and at a teen center. So those two experiences really made me see a lot of the inequities and um, harm some of our systems in this country are doing. So mm -hmm. our education system, healthcare, and that's what drove me to go back to school um, to study public policy and public affairs. And with that, again, a focus in racial and social justice and advocacy work. Mm -hmm. um, but my experience at grad school is also what really drove home my passion for, um, I'd say, inclusion work and equity. Um, just some of the experiences I had pushed me to address it with my program mm -hmm. and say, sign me up to do this work for um, you because right. I don't want other students to feel this way. Mm -hmm. And from there, I kind of switched gears looking at policy analyst positions to more DEI positions that I noticed were um, popping up because a lot of these, I'd say DEI roles are definitely prominent in higher ed, um, but they're becoming more relevant in municipalities, towns and cities. So when I saw the opportunity in Arlington, I went for it. it. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did because we we've been able to work with each other for the last several years. Yeah. Um, and you you mentioned that you were going to be on like on the archaeology track, right? Mm -hmm. So when I think about <laughs> DEI, right, and we think about it, it's sort of like archaeology, right? And so what do you think some of the challenges are when you think through that archaeolo archaeological lens, mm -hmm. what are some of the challenges that you face in your position? Um, in my position, I would say trying to problem solve, but not having all of the pieces. And I think equity work for everyone right now is kind of a puzzle because we're starting to really dive into it, but we don't know what we don't know. So taking steps back to do a lot of fact finding and just talking to people about what their needs are because I think that's something um, that we don't do. And that was a part of my education too, studying public policy that I genuinely had concerns about that, you know, we have folks who are leading our governments, making policies, making choices about and for people without people. Um, and for me that I was like, that's not, <laughs> that's not how this should work. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I think that's still the biggest challenge because we're stuck in the ways of how we always have done things, but that hasn't worked for everyone. Um, yeah. You know, even thinking of right now with COVID, people want to go back to normal. Normal mm -hmm. wasn't great for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So we need to start to figure out how to make things better for mm -hmm. folks. Um, and that's a challenge because you, you're working against a system that's been in place for centuries. Right. Um, yeah, I'd, I, that's probably my biggest challenge is pushing people to want to be able to really take the step 
to make changes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of talk about wanting change and being here for it, but then once it shows up at your doorstep, mm -hmm. you're not quite ready to make that jump. Yeah, I, I face some of that in the school system. Um, what are some of the things that you think help? What some of the strategies and techniques that you think that help to push someone, and I don't want to say push, right, but gently move someone forward in this work, right? And sometimes you, you have to gently <laughs> do it, because um, if you do it too quickly, that's mm -hmm. where the resistance, right, and yep. the fences come up. And so what are some of the, you know, chat, like supports you think or techniques you use that you can see people have moved mm -hmm. from their thought process, like you're shifting their mindset? Um, I would say kind of instilling the sense of the need for self-reflection. Um, it's something I practice too. I will try new things. I think, again, in this field, stuff is kind of trial and error. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we have mm -hmm. some places that we can look to for guidance, mm -hmm. but otherwise every community is different, so you have to also figure out what works for you. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's always you know doing a program, taking a step back, seeing if it had an impact, seeing if it possibly harmed someone, you know, reassessing and self-reflecting on what could have been different, what could be improved, what went well. Um, but I think for others too, that self-reflection piece is recognizing where you are, if you're ready to hop on this equity journey. Um, if you're not ready, what steps do you need to take as an individual to get there? Mm -hmm. And that's just, I mean, for me, it's a matter of like providing basic readings and podcasts and mm -hmm. videos for folks to just tune into mm -hmm. to start to get familiar with the idea of we've lived in a society that's not created for everyone right so just because you necessarily haven't been impacted that doesn't mean the people around you haven't right um so really just kind of being aware of yourself and mm -hmm. the role that you play mm -hmm. is the first step because mm -hmm. otherwise you can't make any adjustments if mm -hmm. you don't recognize what you are doing as an individual. Yeah, you, you said something really important of self-reflection is really important. Um, and one of the other things I feel like is really important is uh, identity, right? Mm -hmm. And so as you talk about self-reflection is how do you help someone that doesn't really understand their like what their identity and what I mean by identity is sometimes race or ethnicity mm -hmm. or I have this culture or I have this tradition um, they don't sometimes it's like helping them to understand that that's pieces of you that you bring into every um, environment that mm -hmm. you're in so how do you help someone when you say self-reflection then to say the self-reflection is based on your identity so how do you help <laughs> someone to kind of know what their identity is to help them to get to that self-reflection piece. Yeah, I would say it's more about ha being able to show up as you are, but also asking questions. I'm a question asker, <laughs> um, so I'm interested. Again, I love people, I'm interested in people. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's about asking questions and asking you know, what you're comfortable with or um, for me too, I think I recognize the mix of identities I hold. Mm. Um, and again, being a person of color, I think you naturally have to do that because it's there. Mm -hmm. um, but for others who are kind of entering the space of self-reflection, I think it's becoming more clear. It's funny, so I have, I, I have this conversation with my parents. <laughs> um, so my dad is black, my mom is white, mm -hmm. and it's been, interesting to watch at least my mom's you know progress over the last few years now that I've been in this type of um, field for work mm -hmm. to really get a full understanding of like race whether mm -hmm. you don't see it or not mm -hmm. you do it's there mm -hmm. that you have to be able to identify who you are what you are and know that it's going to have an impact and just mm -hmm. being I'd say more aware of like people aren't the same um, and accepting different cultures and just being open to people doing things differently mm -hmm. <laughs> and that norms aren't norms for everyone. Right, right. Um, what is most rewarding for you in doing this work? Um, <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> um, 
Honestly, I would say when I get sometimes just those random emails or a letter to my actual mailbox um, in my office, just from a resident who's saying thanks. Mm -hmm. um, and it could be thanks for doing such and such program mm -hmm. or for backing up a statement that was made. Like mm -hmm. just those simple things knowing that, and it's people I've never met, that I have no idea who I'm reaching, but I know that that's my goal is mm -hmm. to have an impact on community members. And when I do get those types of um, folks just reaching out just to say thanks, it makes me feel like the work is worth it. Yeah, and I, I as we do this work, right, <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's important to um, share with people that it's important for us to get that um, on a daily basis because, <laughs> right, because of other the other things that we might face. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you get that thank you note or letter, it's it's like like you said it's like wow this I am making change mm -hmm. right yeah. um, and that's something that you need to see on a daily basis. Um, I work for the schools now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you work for the town, um, and we we've, we've decided to meet mm -hmm. um, regularly to try to figure out like how we can merge or work together and collaborate from the school and the town side. Um, so let's just talk a little bit <laughs> with the audience about our relationship and how we're leaning into yeah. this work. Um, and so I can say that um, for me, stepping into this new role and not being new to Arlington mm -hmm. though, um, you've been very helpful oh, um, and very supportive, right? <laughs> and it's been a very different lens um, that I've had to look through, a, a mm -hmm. kind of wider lens that I've had to look through. And so let's talk about some of the things that you told me to really, um, for myself and for this work, right, to really kind of um, put before myself. Yeah. Um, so I think one of the things that, like I just said, support. Mm -hmm. um, so we can talk about why that's important, I think, in this role. Yeah. Um, I know for me it's important because the work is, is um, it can be emotional. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we talk about that piece. Is, is that true for you? I, I know that that's what I'm, I'm starting to see and feel. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's definitely, and I'd say being in this type of role within the last almost two years with what's been going on across the nation, pandemic, reawakening of realizing racism's real, mm -hmm. um, it's really been tough to be able to manage doing your job, but also your job is part of you, especially when you are trying to advocate for people. Um, so it's definitely been tough to, <laughs> I'd say, manage the emotional piece mm -hmm. and still do the work because mm -hmm. some days you just want to tap out <laughs> because you are on overload because yeah. you saw something else on the news that happened and mm -hmm. you have to take that to work with you mm -hmm. when it doesn't necessarily impact other people the same way. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's been very challenging, but back to that support, um, if you have a network of folks that are there that you can talk to, you're one of those people for me, mm -hmm. um, who I know will also understand where I'm coming mm -hmm. from, it really helps and you need to have that. Um, and I've helped to do that with folks who have this job in other towns and cities in mm -hmm. Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, myself and the, the, the DEI director for Beverly set up a coalition for mm -hmm. folks with that role. He mm -hmm. meets by twice a month right. um, on Fridays. Actually, today we meet. <laughs> um, but you that look forward to those been, meetings. I do. I love it. <laughs> Fridays at twelve. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's really great just to know that you're not alone because this type of work, a lot of these positions are singular roles. Mm -hmm. It's a one person department. It's mm -hmm. a one person. You do it all, um, and you do feel alone, mm -hmm. even though your job consists of working with groups of people. Mm -hmm. um, but it can be isolating, and so having those other folks who you know are dealing with the same exact things, similar issues, challenges, 
and rewards is great to have. Yeah, um, I just became a part of the school one. Uh, yeah, the DEI <laughs> um, directors have a group also, and they formed it last year, mm -hmm. and so that is growing. Um, and that, like you, it was just really good to be in a space with people who do um, job alikes. Mm -hmm. um, and that experience, they understood the experience is that I was just sharing or we were sharing with each other. Mm -hmm. It is also a place, um, I think we should say, um, not, on, not only for support and for resources, um, and for I, different ideas or if you're troubleshooting mm -hmm. um, from, you know, problem solving, yeah. um, I found is really um, a good um, place for that group. What other um, supports do you think is really important as one comes into this job of, of you know, mm -hmm. di you know, this long name <laughs> of diversity, <laughs> equity, and inclusion? Um, I would say that's something that I also don't do well, it's the advice I give, but you know, it's tough to take your own advice, um, is really just taking care of yourself. Knowing when you've hit your boundaries, putting boundaries in place, um, and being able to say, nope, I need today to just reset my mind and take care of your mental health, because it is, it's a taxing role, um, especially if you are someone who is from a historically underrepresented group like mm -hmm. you just feel it a bit more mm -hmm. so making sure that you take care of yourself mm -hmm. first because the work will always be there it's right. gonna it's a lifelong journey yeah um so i think the expectations of oh this role will come in and fix everything that's not realistic it's a commitment that you need if it's a town it's a city a school district whatever you're making this commitment for life because yeah. it's it's not a quick fix. <laughs> no, it's it, and you're 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 like really um, when going into an avenue where like you had mentioned a lot of these roles are coming up mm -hmm. and I think some some people have the mindset oh we do have a DEI director now and so now we've solved a problem when actuality we just we've just begun right, right. we've just begun the work and yeah. how do we really like I, I've, I've been saying like how do we expand the role into a department mm -hmm. and um, what is it when we what does it really mean when we say diversity equity and inclusion and I always you I always add anti-racism mm -hmm. um, um, it's also uh, I think a question I've been asking myself as yeah. I've, I've kind of come into this role um so it's all of that meshed together and you're right it's really someone said to me yesterday it's really important margaret that you do self-care mm -hmm. and they said to me i just don't want to say that to you so let's talk about certain things that you're going to do mm -hmm. which was really important um because um the person said it's a buzzword now yeah self-care has become a buzzword and we're not really saying well jill what are some of the things you do to um because I, I, you know, yeah. I, I think I can say this, like you like rollerblading, because <laughs> oh I, I know that, it. right? Um, so hitting the streets. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, and I like boxing, mm -hmm. and so there are things that we do know um, that I can say, well, Jill, have you been rollerblading yep. lately? So when you're like, I'm ready to scream. <laughs> um, Let me put on my helmet. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. What is, what are the, um, what's another thing um, that a person that comes into this role might, um, before, you know, before coming in might not understand, oh, I might, I might meet with this. Mm -hmm. um, um, I would say just resistance to the work period. Um, I think you think because the role is created that everyone's on board but I think I said earlier once it's time to actually you know put change in motion um, that's where you see folks not really being ready or not thinking there is a problem or that the problem isn't that bad um, and so being able to navigate those spaces and figuring out how to not take it personally um, I think because most of the folks in this role are passionate. <laughs> I know for myself I am, so that's something I too constantly have to remind myself about mm -hmm. that don't take it personally. It's mm -hmm. not about you, it's mm -hmm. about this massive 
shift mm -hmm. that needs to take place and mm -hmm. folks aren't ready. Mm -hmm. um, but I think another thing is being able to know that, know your, know your worth and value, that you were hired for a reason, you have expertise, you have an idea of where you want to take things. So don't let little pockets of resistance stop you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think, and I don't know if you have run into this, I also think that when a person comes into this role, other people have perceptions mm -hmm. of what you should be mm -hmm. doing or what the responsibilities <laughs> of this person is. Um, can you share with me, like when you came into this role, did you feel as though there was some like, um, some people thought, well, no, Jill, I think you should be doing this. Mm -hmm. or, and how did those conversations go? Right, Because yeah. I feel like I'm meeting with those kind of conversations. You definitely are. <laughs> um, so for me, I think it was a little different because of when I started. So I started with the town basically January 2020. What year is mm. it now? 2021? Yeah. yeah. So 2020, <laughs> I have no concept of time. Um, but my kind of responsibilities were laid out, like working mm. with the commissions that I oversee and support, mm. um, doing ADA coordinating, mm. um, and then starting to do some of the racial equity work mm. internally. And then with the pandemic, it just kind of, I don't wanna say derailed, but mm. made other areas very high priority. So. I wasn't expecting to be as responsive to community member needs mm -hmm. as I became. So like, you know, whipping up the community conversation series that, I don't know what I was thinking, trying to do like one every couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I scaled it back this year <laughs> to make, to balance it out. Mm -hmm. But that, um, I'd say that kind of need and want from community members was great it's clear that there's a desire for education and doing more but at the same time it's completely taken over a lot of the other responsibilities mm -hmm. that i have so i think now almost almost two years later i'm at the point where i'm kind of slowing down mm -hmm. building in structure that mm -hmm. i never got to mm -hmm. um future planning mm -hmm. i keep trying to but because mm -hmm. of all of the constant everyday things that pop up, whether it's an incident that I'm helping with or an accommodation that a resident needs or a document review to see if the language is right. Like all of these things come up every single day and then you don't have the time to do the larger scale planning and thinking. And so I'm at the point now where I'm like, okay, we're gonna pause, mm. sorry, I mm -hmm. will get to you, but mm -hmm. there needs to be some structures put in place. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll it'll be more efficient in the long run. <laughs> I think you just said a, a really important word. We're going to pause. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's okay for us to pause, um, to assess, mm -hmm. um, to then after assessment to determine what implementation and what are we going to implement, yep. and then how do we reassess what mm -hmm. we've implemented and. I think I'm 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 starting to say that word a lot more like <laughs> no we can pause Just right? slow down pump the brakes right <laughs> right we can go slow to go fast mm -hmm. um, it's something I'm starting to say a little bit more yeah. especially when we're entering into this work and we have to remember that some um, some marginalized people have been hurt mm -hmm. right by experiences and so yep. as we delve into this work and we are really wanting to do the diversity and the the and the equity and the inclusion and the anti-racism we want to make sure that we're doing it in a thoughtful and meaningful way like you said we're putting in structures that mm -hmm. um we have to de dismantle structures first right, right? <laughs> before we can put structures in yeah um so that as we're doing this work that we're doing, I, I feel like um, a great word I want to say is healing. Mm -hmm. We're doing, we're starting to do the healing spaces and yeah. healing um, structures is what comes to my mind when I've been doing this work um, mm -hmm. as I, I've merged into this work. So just like you said, there's a lot that um, that we have to 
just look at. Mm -hmm. We have to really be courageous, right, <laughs> to start having these conversations. So that's another place where it starts. Yeah. Um, what do you think some of the, um, what do you think some of the future, like, goals or aspirations or hope, things you look down the line for in this work for the town? And as we work together, mm -hmm. maybe we can talk about what we hope for together. I know we're still kind of, really talking about that and yeah. um, and where I think we're going slow mm -hmm. so that we can really understand how yeah. we collaborate together so what are some of the hopes and aspirations yeah um, I mean I think my end my like overall goal would be that I don't need to be called for questions or to solve problems because everyone in every town department will have the tools and the knowledge to be able to address the equity issues that are presented. Um, so that, so I guess like working towards that would be um, not just training, but culture shift. And the culture shift part of that is accountability. So mm. figuring out how, how we as a town will actually hold ourselves accountable. Mm -hmm. um, if we're committing to this work, mm -hmm. um, and that's something I don't, I don't know how. Right. <laughs> um, so that's a goal is to figure that out mm -hmm. and start to put things in place. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think for me it would be you know having a division that can be built up and be a resource mm -hmm. and support for the town, mm -hmm. um, but that it's not the problem solving division. That it's mm. providing tools and resources to all other departments and folks um, to be able to do the work themselves so that we're baking an equity lens into everything that we're doing. But like you said, that also means dismantling <laughs> systems and structures right. that we already have in place right. um, because they're built n not with the best of, not the best of intentions, but they weren't built for everyone. Right. So, you know, taking steps back, looking at the policies, the procedures, what we have going on now, and taking the time to kind of redo things the right way. Jill, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today <laughs> um, for um, DEI Matters Conversations with Margaret Credo Thomas. Yeah. I always love talking to you. I think um, we can even talk more about how we can, <laughs> you know, maybe have more of these conversations and maybe bring a couple more people in yeah. to our space um, as we, we delve into this work. Okay. So thank you for joining us. I am Margaret Credo Thomas, and we will see you soon.